victims families to speak to the court. Today there will be a huge show of support for a Rutherford County detective who died in a crash. Detective Jake Bowe's body will be brought from Nashville to Murfreesboro today. The motorcade will begin today about noon and will include the closure of I-24 East from Briley to Old Fort Parkway. His visitation is at four tonight at Franklin Road Baptist Church. Well, it's your chance to enjoy a night of culture at the Renaissance Nashville Hotel and all of this for a global day of discovery. Brianna Hamblin's joining us live now outside of the Renaissance Hotel in downtown Nashville. And uh, Brianna, what's in store for people there tonight? Ben and Amy, there will be good food, music, culture, like you said, and uh, a little bit of history right there at the bridge part. At bridge bar at the Renaissance Hotel and so this event has happened before but it's back for the first time in four years. It's happening from 5 to 6 30 p.m. Appetizers will be available as people listen to music from the soul band the Magi. A live painting will be completed by a Nashville based artist and the National Museum of African American Music will showcase items worn by dancer Mancho Ishii from 90s hip hop group Arrested Development and people who attend will also also received six dollars off to go to the National Museum of African American Music for the rest of May. Back to you. Thank you, Brianna. The Tennessee Whiskey Trail experience starts today and runs through the weekend. More than 30 distilleries are participating. Pennington Distilling Company starts off today with a blend your own bottle experience for a full list of the festival's events as well as tickets. Head over to Tennessee Whiskey Trail Experience .com. Coming up, when a group of geese crossed the road, the city's police department saw it as a chance to remind pedestrians of the rule. Stories that caught our eye and my full forecast coming up next. Hey, welcome back. It's time now for the stories that caught our eye. So when adorable video comes along, of course we have to share it. Yeah, now, you have we to. We want you to see it. The Wooster, Ohio Police Department captured this dash cam video of some Canadian geese crossing the street with little ones in tow. Lots of baby goslings. Aww. Well, the Facebook post caption says, Remember to stay within the crosswalk. City Ordinance 371.03. <laughs> Well, they weren't exactly in the crosswalk. It was pretty close. Also, it's first the question. Can you guys guess? Oh, boy. Why did the geese <laughs> cross the road? Oh. What's the answer supposed to be? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever okay, you yeah. want it to yeah. be. But it was one of those things that, anyway, just pretty cute. No, it cute is. Video. Yeah, we I need love it. seeing the little ones this yeah. every know. spring. Do you ever swerve whenever you come across? Like, I had a bird in front of me the other yeah. day, and I know that bird is probably going to fly hmm. away as I get close, but I still, like, slammed on my brakes. Yeah. I think, I think you're asking it. the wrong no, person. You yeah. had a possum. Do not. I did. I killed a possum Monday. But you felt bad about it. I did because mm -hmm. he looked up and yeah. he just did this face and then and I and then and then he well was gone. Anyway, Uber <laughs> rolling out a new feature guys allowing teens to ride by themselves. So a parent or caretaker will need to add the teen to their profile in order <laughs> the ride for them. <laughs> the teen must be between 13 and 17. And once the Uber gets there, the teen will have to give the driver a unique pin number. The app will record audio during the ride and the parent can follow the trip's progress. Uh, parents will be able to contact the driver or Uber support team at any time during the ride. They can do that. Uber says only highly rated and experienced drivers will be allowed to provide those rides to unaccompanied teens. The new update rolls out on Monday. You're still thinking about the possum <laughs> <laughs> trying to talk Uber. I don't know about this. I mean, honestly, obviously my daughter's quite young, so she doesn't yeah. even meet the age requirement, but it's still, maybe I'm too old school. It's a little scary for yeah, me. No, I, it, I don't know, 14 it, and the Uber, even with all that technology. All of it, even scary. for grownups. I'm like, it goes against everything you've ever yeah. been told is to not get in a car with a stranger. I, right? I still don't understand all of, all of that, but yeah. for a child, I personally, would not would yeah. not do yeah. it, right. but I understand there is yeah, a sure. need. So right. yeah, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I couldn't either. I know. And again, it's great that they're putting all those features exactly. in there. Anything yeah. to make you feel better. I'm sure people will take advantage sure. of that for sure, but sure. not me. Okay. All right. Well, it was a scary scene at a youth baseball game over the weekend. A seven year old catcher engulfed by a short lived 
dust devil oh. on Sunday afternoon in Florida. Sand debris all spiraled right around that boy for just a few seconds before a 17 year old umpire came in and rescued him from that dust devil. The catcher said it felt more like 10 minutes to him, though I'm sure it did while he was in the middle of it. The dust didn't stop him from playing the good news. His dad was there in attendance, poured some water on his eyes Aww. to get the dirt out of them, and he was back to playing in the game. So I told Ben I was going to put him on the spot today. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, since you claim that you're kind of an amateur meteorologist yeah. with your one meteorology mm -hmm. course mm -hmm. you've taken, right. what, what makes a dust devil? Well, the wind and the dirt, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why does that happen and yeah. spin up like that? So, especially on a sunny day, mm -hmm. when it heats the ground, the sun will heat the ground unevenly. It creates this little area of low pressure, which it did mm -hmm. right over home plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then all the air rushes in to fill mm -hmm. that area yeah. of low pressure and creates this dust devil. So, it's often confused with a tornado. Sure. Tornadoes yeah. happen from thunderstorms, from yeah. the cloud. Yeah. Right. Dust devils happen on sunny days from the ground. And as an amateur ball player, which I also yeah. was, <laughs> they should have been hosing that dirt down because that keeps it packed down. So, yeah. in case you get a dirt devil, and it helps everybody out, especially mm -hmm. in the batter's box. So just, just for future yeah, It's notice. the park's fault. It's been doing. <laughs> and I'm sure that father <laughs> yeah, did what my dad did, which is like, you know, poured some dirt in it, yeah. you know, that water to get the dirt yeah. off. He said, all right, suck it up, get back in there. Yeah. Oh, That's I what know. you got to do. Yeah. I'm glad the kid went back and got to play. Yeah, yeah I mean, nice. it wasn't too scared. Okay, today we are going to have some warm temperatures. Mm -hmm. Again, 80s again for the afternoon, and some thunderstorms do look possible later on today. Not everybody, I think, is going to see a storm. It's mainly going to be for our eastern tier. This is our sky camera in Nashville right now. Looks beautiful out there this morning. The low humidity, so wonderful yesterday. I hope you were able to get outside and soak it up. Still feeling really good out there right now. 71, our current temperature here. We've got some 60s still on the map. Look over towards McMinnville. We're at 66. Same temperature there for our friends in Murfreesboro. Starting to warm up. Notice the southwest. We're already seeing those low 70s out there. 68 up in Hopkinsville. Here's where we top out for the day today. 82 in Nashville, 81 in Dixon, 81 in Murfreesboro. Some highs in the 70s as you look off towards the east. I do think temperatures could get cooler again east of I-65 with some of that rain cooled air if you get a thunderstorm that develops for you. Right now, Power of 5 radar is nice and dry, but as we heat up this afternoon, that heat helping not only to fuel the dust devils we just described to you, but also some thunderstorm activity later today. This is 2 o'clock. Notice some storms starting to pop up like popcorn there on the radar. This will be fueled by the heat, so once the sun sets, we do expect these thunderstorms to die down. While we're not expecting anything severe. A couple of those storms could get a little bit strong. You may get some heavy downpours, possibly some gusty winds as well. Looking ahead towards the rest of this week and then heading into the weekend, watching a line of storms that's going to be coming in Friday night into Saturday. That will bring us a chance to see another round of storms that will keep us cooler as we go into the weekend. Right now, Saturday and Sunday, guys. Highs only in the 70s. Hmm. Okay, thanks, Heather. Well, the warm weather has some people daydreaming about their summer vacation plans. And coming up, we're helping you plan ahead. Welcome back. Graduations continue for Metro students. Overton High School and Academy of Old Cockrell are set to have ceremonies today. And many college students are entering the real world after graduating and personal finance expert Julie Alma Tavares has a few tips to gain control of their finances. So uh, track expenses for at least six months to see your habits before creating a new budget. Learn to negotiate your salary. Research how much your role pays and advocate for yourself and create a financial strategy that fits your short term and long term goals. Experts recommend the 50 20 30 method where 50% of your paycheck pays for your living expenses, 20% goes to your savings, and then the last 30% is for things that you enjoy. Mm. All good tips there. Yeah. yeah, and finances are the hardest thing. I uh, know. They? they really are. To learn. All right, the end of school means the family summer vacations are right around the corner. Kate with Kate's Travel Tricks helps us plan ahead. Doing this one small thing has improved our family trips exponentially. All you need is a piece of scrap paper or your phone. After every trip, I debrief three areas. First, packing. What do I wish that I had brought and what did I bring but not use? For activities, I look at which ones did we like and which ones didn't go well. Last is logistics, what went smoothly and what didn't. The process of writing it down helps me reflect on what we can do better next time and what we can celebrate that did go well. 
That's actually a really good idea. I mean, you're paying a lot of money. You're taking time off work. Yes. A lot of times you're taking the kids with you. I mean, it's okay to look back at a vacation. Mm -hmm. What did we love? What did we not like so much? And then yes. you can use that to. And I love people's tips. We mm -hmm. always read through if we're looking oh, at that's a, true. you know, um, mm -hmm. some type of resort yeah. to see oh, yeah. what people say. Like word just of to mouth, learn right? from learn from them mm -hmm. too. Yeah. You got some vacation time coming up. Uh, it's a long. Yes. He's gone yeah. for a while. Yeah. Uh, it's only three days. Oh, oh. <laughs> only three days. It's gonna feel like forever for us. Hey, to check out more tips and tricks, you can head to newschannel5.com slash let me help. And if you've got a question, mm -hmm. let us help you. You can email us at let me help at newschannel5.com with your question and we'll try to find an expert with an answer. All right. It is a friendship that started in the hospital and 17 years later, they are still close. Claire Kopsky is walking in the studio right now for us. She's going to join us with this story. Welcome back. Claire Kopsky is here as mm -hmm. we take time to smile this morning and we're talking about little babies. Yes, the anticipation of a new addition to the family. It's so special and it's truly a miracle, Claire. It really is. And sometimes those little miracles come a little bit earlier yeah. than mm -hmm. both mom and doctors would like. And they spend a little time in NICUs growing under special care. Mm -hmm. It's a place where many families go throughout their toughest moments, but it can also be a place where it brings people together, which is what happened at TriStar Centennial in a story that feels almost too good to be true. I started here in 2000, so this will be my 23rd year here in the NICU. After spending more than two decades in a neonatal intensive care unit, Jamie Horton's seen a lot. Having a baby in the NICU is not what you plan. It's not what any of our moms plan. Their baby's hooked up to monitors. There's stickers on their chest, which is I, I describe as lead stickers, but there's leads. They're connected to a monitor that watches their heart rate, their breathing. You know, they might be on oxygen. It's a very scary time for families, and because they often stay for weeks at a time, nurses like Jamie get to know the families well. So I remember Tatum was a very tiny um, and a very sick baby to start. So I knew when I was taking care of her that day, she really, she demanded a lot of my time that day. Um, I got to meet her dad, Jeremy, that day. Um, didn't get to meet her mom because she was still on another floor um, recovering from delivering. Tatum Kelly was born on August 25th, 2005. The same week, another baby was born. Hey, Ryan, this is September 4th, and I'm going to your girl's plan. We've got you over here in your nursery. Okay, side by side in the NICU months before their due dates, Leighton Long and Tatum's parents became fast friends as they endured some of the hardest and most helpless days. More than two months later, both babies graduated the NICU and went home to their own Tennessee counties. But their parents remained friends, scheduling play dates for the kids that grew their friendship for seven years. 